And they kept coming and coming and coming. Y'all see the report this week in New York? They got seven to nine inches of rain. Man, subways flooded, streets, all kinds of places. Houses flooded. And they weren't expecting that. And so, here are these two guys in the middle of the storm. Here it goes. The rain's coming. The flood. You know, they're watching the, 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 the flood stage of the river. And, you know, and then the wind starts coming. And then what happens? All of a sudden, you know, Buzzy and his wife are in their house. And, okay, here we go. And then Fuzzy and his wife are in their house. But all of a sudden, they start hearing something. A little bit of creaking. A little bit of rocking. A little bit of movement. And all of a sudden, there's a lot of movement. And then the roof starts coming off. The walls start falling down. And just falling. And, and you can hear poor Fuzzy's wife. I told you you should have built my hands. What you doing? And she got out of there, and she probably half swam, half ran to get to Buzzy's house because the house was still standing. And Buzzy probably, he was too proud. He just sat in the middle of his wreckage where it all fell down around him. He just sat there, too proud to go and get help. He said, there it is. And so the thing is, Jesus was showing us about our lives following him. And he said in the scripture, you know, he said there in verse 7, uh, excuse me, verse 24. He said, therefore, who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a sensible man who built his house on the rock. And basically, Buzzy is the guy, the good, the Christian. He, he's concerned. He wants to study God's word. He desires to hear it. He wants to obey it, and he does. He knows he's not perfect. He desires to be more like Jesus. He's humble. He admits his failures, confesses his sin, examines himself to see, okay, what am I not doing right according to what the Bible says? And basically wants to make sure his life lines up with what the Bible is teaching. His talk, talking about Jesus, talking about the Bible, and his actions coincide. They're consistent. And basically he wants to escape hell. He wants to go to heaven and have a positive holy influence in his life, on others, and on the world. Basically, his faith and his actions are together. That's Buzzy. Now, Buzzy is a guy who may say, I am a Christian making a profession of faith. But here's the difference. He doesn't study God's Word. He hears it and many times he ignores it or just forgets about it. He doesn't have any desire to be like Jesus. He's usually only interested in what he can get out of his connection with Jesus. He only wants the benefits. He only wants the blessings. And he, that, that he has seen in other Christians' lives. He's no desire to know God or the effects of sin on his life in the light of the holiness of God. He talks, he talks about the love of God, but not about God's righteousness and holiness. He wants to go to heaven, but he wants to go on his terms, and he wants to do it his way. And the thing is, he's not going to make it. And so, Jesus warned, judgment's coming. The judgment is coming. And that's what the rain and the floods and the wind is. Now, you can think about the rain. Y'all, any of y'all been caught out in the rain before? Y'all been somewhere and you didn't have a raincoat or an umbrella? What'd you do in the car? Well, it may slack up a little bit. I'll wait. I'll see what's happening. And then what happens? It don't slack up. And so you say, okay, what, what, what's the next thing? I'm going to make a run for it. I'm going to make a run for it. Here we go. I know the store is 132 feet away, but I'm going to make a run for it. <coughs> and so, you have the rain coming. So, the rain can symbolize possibly the unavoidable events in life sickness, loss, great disappointments, things gone wrong, sudden change in your circumstances. Friends fail you. You have grief. You have bereavement. The unavoidable circumstances of life would be like the rain. The floods. You think about flood. Floods are scary things. You can't control them. Water is a powerful force. And when you have floods and water moving, you just better get to high ground. Get out of the way. What are floods? Basically, it's the world system assaulting your faith. When you take Jesus Christ as your Savior, you basically are taking, choosing a side. And your side is not the world. The world is going to be against you. It's the world system. And so, the world can come in like a roaring whitewater wave, or it can come in silently, unobserved, and unsuspecting. 
And you all had to deal with termites? Are they loud? Do they say, all right, we're coming. Here we go. They don't do that, do they? They're silent. And then it's too late when you find out. They've already done the damage. It's just like water. Water seeps in a little bit at a time. You don't notice it, but eventually it's not a good thing. And so the thing is, the world system tries to entice us to pull us away from Jesus Christ, to pull us away from the church. Maybe a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. And we're going to uh, the fair, Coastal Carolina Fair, senior in high school, had a friend with me. And uh, we were going down the midway where all the games were. And have you ever been there? And what are they doing? What are these guys that have these games? What do they do? I just go on by. They're just leave me alone. Is that what they do? What do they do? Talk to me. Come on. That's right. Come on. Come on. Play. Go, you know, go on. You know, you know win this. Win that. You know, try to try to look at this. 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 Well, a friend of mine, she's a she's a senior with me. She says, I don't think I can resist. You know, all these people calling. I just took her hand and said, Come on, let's go. Walk through the midway. Some of y'all saying, Yeah, he's cheap. He wants to spend all his money. I didn't have a lot of money to begin with, but we want to ride rides, not waste our money on those things. But she said, I don't know. I, you know, I, just, I just took her hand real nice, and I said, come on, let's just keep walking, just keep on going. That's what the world tries to do. Said, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, follow me, follow me. Come on, I, let me entice you with this. But then, at times, the world system is going to bear its teeth, and it's going to come after you, and through persecution, and through name-calling and basically making you look like a fool for following Jesus Christ. So that's the flood that comes. Now what else? What we have? Rain, wind, and what else? Not oh, well, I'm sorry, my fault. Rain, flood, and then we have wind. Right? Wind. So the wind can possibly represent the satanic attacks. If you've chosen to side, Satan is now your enemy if you've chosen Jesus Christ. He is your enemy. Now, Scripture describes Satan. He comes as an angel of light or he comes like a dragon breathing fire. He's going to come one or two ways. He'll throw those thoughts into your mind. He'll, he'll, he'll make you have doubts, disappointment. He'll say, what about this? What about that? And he'll tempt you. He can't make you do these things. He'll tempt you. He'll dangle it in front of you. And sometimes it's like an angel of light. Oh, isn't that? won't be bad. That's okay. Or he comes at you like a dragon in full force. And you're fighting against him. And so, the thing is, it's the way you react. It's the way you face these things. And mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. To show where you are as far as your growth. Now, we talked about this earlier. We mentioned it. Basically, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll do my commandments. If you love me, you obey what I'm telling you to do. Because Jesus didn't say, I don't want you to have any fun. He didn't say that. He says, I want you to obey my commandments because I know what the results are going to be. If you obey, you'll be blessed. It's not going to be easy at times, but you'll be blessed. And this is the right way to go. And it has lasting effects. But the thing is, if some people say, if you say you love Jesus, but you don't obey His commandments, then what kind of love is that? You have no desire to be like Jesus. You don't really care about His Word. You, you might read it once in a while. Some, you, know, you can even quote Scripture. You can do different things. It looks good on the outside. But on the inside, there's nothing. There's nothing. Now, I mentioned this earlier. Hurricane Hugo. Who was here for Hurricane Hugo? Most of y'all, right? You know, that, that little storm. Right? We were up in Ohio when that came through. Now, we came down here. Now, we were watching it on TV. And we came down here the day after, Pam and I. And we had, we, uh, people, had, people had sent us. I literally had a legal pad filled with requests. And we stopped at a Sam's in Charleston, West Virginia. And they came on down. Spookiest thing I ever saw it. Driving on I-26, we passed Columbia, and we were the only two vehicles on the road. And I'm thinking, great. 
you know, because I knew about the curfew, knew about all those things. They had literally cut the trees to the shoulder. I mean, literally, so you could pass on the road, but that was it. Every so often, at an exit, you see a big four bay piece plywood where leaf supplies would arrow. And I'm thinking, great, this is like 10 o'clock at night. You know, past the curfew. And I'm thinking, you know what? People do stupid things when they're desperate. Y'all ever done that? Y'all ever seen people that people get desperate, they do some stupid things. And so we're, we're just driving down the road, and that day was open carry. I had, I had a 357 with me, and I said, you just never know what's going to happen, what people will do. So anyway, it was just spooky. And of course, no electricity, no nothing. It was just dark, but when it was I-26, nothing. And so, Hurricane Hugo, when it came through here, it definitely tested the construction of these buildings. Some houses completely gone. Remember reading about one they found floating out in the Atlantic, probably five miles offshore. Just there it was. Just got blown off of its foundation, off of Isle of Palms, and there it was. And so, so houses, you found out just how good your construction was in this storm. My brother-in-law stayed. And uh, he was in his house, and he said the walls were literally vibrating. And he was in an all brick house. I mean, he said, and he told us afterwards, he said, I am never staying again. He said, that was crazy. But anyway, a true, the thing is, we have to be careful. Where are we putting our foundation? What kind of foundation are we building? Are we building it on Jesus Christ, on God's Word? Or are we just pretending? And just, well, whatever, it looks good, but it's not really deep. There was a gentleman who was a Christian. And he ended up, he had a fatal disease, terminal disease. And he kept asking God, he said, hey, man, why, why, why? And I don't understand this. I've served you my whole life. I've, I've done all these things. I've read the Bible. I've cared for people. I've done all these things. Why? He just, and you know, the enemy was there throwing the doubts, discouraging. And finally God gave you an answer. He said, you know, he said, there's a lot of people that they show people how to live for me. Their life is good, and they demonstrate that. But he said, I want you to show people how to die with me. How to die with me. And this man, when he understood it, in the hospital, dealing with different things, and he was able to be a testimony to those people doctors, the nurses, the medical staff, visitors, different people, he was able to be a testimony to them, to share Jesus with them, even in the situation he was in. And eventually he died, but he died in a place of peace and comfort, secure, knowing where he was going. And the people that gave testimonies at his funeral and said, I've never really witnessed a Christian, a real Christian, who was dying. I've never really witnessed it. But it made an impact in life. So where's your foundation? Are you ready? Are you ready for the storms of life? Is your foundation dug deep? Or is it just sitting on top? Is it a shallow thing? Or is it deep? Deep being, do you know Jesus Christ as your Savior? Are you reading His Word? Are you obeying what He says to do? You're not perfect. Remember I said, you know, it's not really perfection. It's progress. Wants to see progress. And that's what obedience is. Progress in your life. But the thing is, are you really there? Do you really have a good foundation? Pottery workers, usually in Greece, they would fire their, their clay pots make vases and things. Now, sometimes, you know, a lot of times they would come out good, you know, fired, ready to go. And then sometimes when they would fire some of these pots, they would develop little cracks. And so what they would do, as a good artisan would do, is he would take wax and fill in the cracks. And then he would sand it down. And then, you know, he would make it look good. And then he would put all these for sale. And then he would ask people when they would come, he said, do you want a vase like this? Or a vase like this. Now the one with wax in it costs less. But basically he was saying, do you want a vase that is Cine said without wax 
or do you want one with wax? This is cheaper, but this is without wax. Which one? And so which, what kind of Christian are you? Are you one that's without wax? You've got a solid, you've got the foundation, you're following Jesus Christ as best you can. Or are you the one with wax? All right, you look good, but not really a solid foundation, not really a good thing. You talk a lot, but you don't follow. Let's bow our heads for this. Where are you in your life? Do you, first, do you know Jesus Christ as your Savior? Do you realize that each of us, sinner, can't get to heaven on our own? No matter what we do, no matter how much money or what position, your name, whatever the case is, you can't get there on those things. They're not bad things, but you can't get to heaven on those things. But one thing, the Bible says, Jesus said, Whosoever will may come. You come to me. You put your faith and trust in me. Because Jesus said, I have died for you, I've taken the punishment. I've saved you from the penalty of sin, that punishment. And you know, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior for our complete faith and trust in Him, not only is He saving us from the penalty of sin, but in present, He's saving us from the power of sin. Sin does not have that power over us. We have an opportunity to say, no, I am not going to do that. And then, one day, knowing Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, We'll be saved from the presence of sin. Because we'll pass from this place and we'll be in heaven. So we have been saved from the penalty of sin from knowing as our Savior. We are being saved from the power of sin. But one day we'll be saved from the presence of sin. It's not like in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed and holy and great is your name. Your kingdom come and your will be done here on earth. As it is in heaven. And one day that's going to be Jesus is coming back. The judgment is coming. Are you, are you ready for Him? The next event is what we call the rapture. Jesus is going to come for His church. Are you ready? Are you ready for that? Or are you going to be one sitting, man, I guess I made a mistake. Ooh, oh no. What did I do wrong? Man, I guess I can't fool Jesus. That's the next event. Do you know Jesus Christ? And praise Him and say, thank you, Lord, for doing those things for me. If you don't know Him, I'm standing right here. I'm going to be by this table where these flowers are. You can come down here. You can talk to me. You can talk to me after church. Whatever the case may be, you can, you can right there where you're sitting. Yes, Jesus, I accept you as my Savior, my Lord. I want to follow you. I want to obey what you said. Our instrument, instrumental is going to play one verse. This will give you an opportunity if you'd like to respond however way you choose. As they play.
you know, remember there's a lot of people here, so you, know, you can go back for seconds. It's okay, but uh, make sure everybody gets through first. So, Frank, if you dismiss us in prayer, but also pray for our food. Okay. Pray for our food. We know it's going to be good. An awful lot of people put their heart into it. So enjoy it. That's what it's there for. And say hello to our older citizens who have been good for many years. Pastor Dan, thank you for a very good sermon today. It was enough to keep a few of us awake. And to the rest of the people here today, thank you for coming. May God watch over you.